This video from Learn Electrics is about selecting the correct type of MCB for function and safety and follows on from a previous video about how MCBs work. In this video, we will look at the different type designations of miniature circuit breakers and find out how circuit characteristics affect the type selection process. We cannot simply change a type B for a type C just because it might solve a problem. Do you remember that with electrics, if something is changed over here, then there will need to be a complementary change over there. We should not just make changes to circuits without considering all the factors that affect the safety of persons and the safety of buildings. Let's begin with a look at the different types of MCB. There are two type groups, the BSEN 60898 MCBs and BSEN 61009 RCBOs, they use the designation types B, C and D for the most popular types. And then the older but still in use BS3871 MCBs with the type numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. We can have the same amps rating of MCB with different type numbers or letters. A B16 device has a 16 amp current rating and a type B response curve. A C16 device has the same 16 amp current rating but a type C response curve. And a D16 device will still have a 16 amp current rating but with a D type response curve. So let's have a look at the tripping currents and how this works with the response curves. The type number is actually a rating multiplier that tells us how quickly the device will do two things. How it will respond to real faults and how it will buffer itself against nuisance or startup tripping. Look at these two tables shown here. We've included the types Z and K, but most often it will be types B, C and D that you come across. The B type will trip within 0.4 seconds if a short or fault current of five times its rating is detected. The type C will respond to a current of 10 times its rating and so on. For our example, a 20 amp type C MCB will operate almost instantly, that is to say in less than 0.4 seconds, with a short or fault current of 10 times 20 amps, which is 400 amps. This chart compares the tripping currents of the 60898 types B, C and D with the tripping currents of the 3871 types 1, 2, 3 and 4. And in this example, we will use a 10 amp MCB for comparisons. Looking at the BCD row, the white area is the area of not tripping. So between 0 amps and 30 amps, a B type will not trip. Between 30 amps and 50 amps, a B type 10 amp breaker is in the ready to trip zone. And at 50 amps, that is to say at 5 times 10 amps, it will definitely have tripped. For a C type, the same 10 amp MCB will think about tripping with a fault current between 50 and 100 amps. At 100 amps, it will definitely have tripped. That is to say, 10 times 10 amps is 100 amps. And the 10 amp D type between 100 and 200 amps. 10 amps times 20 is 200 amps. The 3871 number types are roughly similar except type 4, which can have a top limit of anywhere between 30 and 50 times the MCB rating, depending on the manufacturer. But most of these are being phased out now, as consumer units and distribution boards are replaced and upgraded. If we just look at types B, C and D, we will get an idea of how they all work. Here are the three response curves, as they are called, for the three types. How quickly they react is shown in seconds up the left hand side and the current to make them trip is shown on the bottom from left to right. Let's look at some very simple examples to demonstrate what might happen. When a circuit device is first switched on, there will be a surge of current that quickly settles down to its normal running current. Let's assume that this graph shows the current in purple of a circuit with a 2 kilowatt water heater. There is a 10 amp MCB type B installed with a ZS of 3.5 ohms. 
The purple current line surges at switch on, almost reaches the B-type line and then settles down. The MCB does not trip. The red line has not been crossed. What would happen though if this was a small workshop with, instead, a lathe with an electric motor? It is still a type B 10 amp MCB and the ZS is still 3.5 ohms. The startup surge of the motor is much greater due to the nature of electric motors. The purple current line in our example surges past the B type red line. The MCB trips, cutting off the power to the lathe motor at the point where the red line is crossed. But there is nothing wrong with the circuit. There is no fault, it is just the startup surge and the customer is not happy. They will complain that many times when they first turn the circuit on, they have to reset the MCB several times before the machinery stays on. Once the lathe is running, everything is okay. But next time, they must repeat the same resetting process again. So our local handyman is called in and changes the B-type for a C-type. The C-type is less sensitive than the B-type and that clears the problem. The startup surge does not trip the MCB. But what happens during a short or large earth fault, a real fault? The C-type MCB is less sensitive and because the ZS remains at 3.5 ohms, the device does not trip in 0.4 seconds as it should. In our example, it could be 10 to 15 seconds before it operates. The C-type needs 100 amps to guarantee it trips in less than 0.4 seconds and we've now put the customer in danger during a genuine fault. The correct solution is to check the ZS before changing the type of breaker. If the ZS was only 1.75 ohms, fault current would flow easily exceeding the 100 amps required and the MCB would trip in less than 0.4 seconds for safety. Because we made the circuit less sensitive, we had to reduce the ZS to make more fault current flow. Not working current, but fault current. This extra fault current restored the sensitivity to faults back to what it should be. Of course, in real life, it is often difficult to reduce the ZS, so we must check this first before changing types. But you never know, you might be lucky, the actual ZS might already be less than 1.75 ohms. Why does ZS matter? How do we know what they should be and what can we do? Here is a page from the Wiring Regulations book, page 370 in this case. It shows the response curves for a B-type MCB. On page 371 are the response curves for a C-type and page 372 has the D-type curves. We are interested in the table at the top right of each page and we show the tables from pages 370 and 371 here. Look at the red highlighted boxes. The chart actually tells us that the fault current required for a 10 amp B type is 50 amps and for a 10 amp C type it is 100 amps. If we make some calculations on these numbers we arrive at the maximum permitted ZS for each type and these are shown in our case on page 62 of the wiring regulations. The red boxes show the B-type as having a maximum ZS of 4.37 ohms and the blue boxes show the C-type as a maximum ZS of 2.19 ohms, half the B-type maximum. We've halved the sensitivity so we must halve the ZS and these tables tell us this. The values are called tabulated values, they have come from these tables shown here. But we need measured values something to compare our test meter measurements against. So we must then multiply these values by 0.8 to arrive at the measured values. As shown, 4.37 times 0.8 is 3.5 ohms. And 2.19 times 0.8 is 1.75 ohms. Or we can refer to the on-site guide table B6, where all the calculations have already been done for us. The on-site guide shows what we should measure as a maximum with our test meter for each type and rating of MCB. Notice that the C-type maximum is half the B-type maximum and the D-type is half the C-type, a useful thing to remember. Always be aware 
that if you are planning to change the type of breaker, then you must check the ZS first. If the ZS is not suitable for the new MCB, then you must take steps to reduce the ZS before fitting the new MCB. The ZS and the MCB requirements must match each other. Look at this example where we have a 32 amp MCB type B installed. In this circuit, ZE is 0.35 ohms and the internal R1 plus R2 is 0.58 ohms. Add the two together and our ZSM is 0.93 ohms and this is fine for a B type. If we wanted to change to a C type, then the maximum ZS would be 0.55 ohms for that circuit. We cannot install a 32 amp type C MCB without first reducing the ZS to 0.55 ohms or less. We cannot change ZE, so all we can change is R1 plus R2, and that will most times be difficult or impossible. We can't move the machinery and we can't rewire the circuit. Here is an example circuit. A B32 MCB has a maximum measured ZS of 1.1 ohms. And let's say that the actual measured ZS is at 1.07 ohms. This is made up of ZE at 0 0.35 ohms and R1 plus R2 at 0 0.72 ohms. Now, change to a C32 MCB. The maximum ZS is 0 0.55 ohms. ZE is still 0 0.35 ohms. That leaves just 0 0.2 ohms for R1 plus R2. You are never going to achieve this unless you move the machine next to the consumer unit. There is, however, another solution. Does that particular circuit actually need 32 amps? So very often, a 32 amp circuit is installed as standard, just because 32 amps is always installed. But what if the machinery only needed 13 amps? Could we install a C16 MCB instead and not alter any of the wiring? Look at the chart shown. A C16 MCB has a maximum ZS of 1.09 ohms and our actual ZS of 1.07 ohms is lower than this and is an acceptable reading. So we cannot move the machinery to make the circuit shorter and we cannot rewire in larger cable. Our solution then is to change the original B32 MCB for a C16 MCB and all is well again. Before we go, let's consider a motor rated MCB. You will sometimes see Type C breakers advertised as motor rated MCBs. This seems to indicate that every motor circuit should have a Type C MCB. This is not correct. Type C breakers are not motor rated devices. Type C breakers are not specifically designed for motor circuits. Yes, we can install a motor on a Type C, but some motors can function just as well on Type B MCBs. And at other times, a motor will need a Type D. We always install the MCB that is correct for the job. A quick summary. Some circuits have high startup currents. Type B MCBs might be replaced with Type C or Type D. But the existing ZS for the new MCB may be too high for the device to operate within safety limits. Always check that the existing ZS will be suitable for the new device. Some circuits have ZS values that will not be suitable for a change of MCB type. And for other circuits, a change of MCB rating and type is the way forward. And that is it. Hopefully, this video has been useful to you and a little more knowledge has found its way into your mental toolbox. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar. Select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. 
Click on Return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description and each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the top left of the home page and all our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector. Page 2, 3, 4 and so on that will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. Once again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.